All right, so um, as Armida mentioned, I am the director of Brain Education TV. Brain Education TV is a YouTube channel where I make content for mental health for youth. So it's, um, that's where I express some things that I wish that I heard when I was in high school. So I'll give you a little background about me so you know who is this person, why is she here, what is she going to talk about today. So first of all, I am also from California. And uh, when I look back on my high school life, my high school life is probably a lot similar to what you guys are going through now. I come from a very strict Asian household and my parents had vi have very or had very, very high expectations of me. My dad's a doctor and they gave me two options of occupations that I can choose from a wide variety of two options of things I could be when I grew up. Can you guess what it was? Doctor and lawyer. <laughs> Those are my only two options of what I could be when I grow up. So I had a lot of academic pressure. I went through a lot um, of stress in high school. Uh, and because I'm the first child also, my parents placed a lot of expectations on me. So now what I do is I make content for someone like you guys facing academic pressure, social pressure, the ins and outs of high school, and especially exacerbated by the pandemic. You guys are at home doing at home learning, and I'm sure that adds another dimension of stress. So I'm here to share with you something that I wish someone told me when I was in high school. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand and unmute and um, talk or chat, whatever is easy for you. I just want to make this helpful for you guys. So when Armida invited me, I thought about doing some exercises with you uh, about and giving you stress reduction tips, but you can find that on my YouTube channel. What I think I want to share with you more about today is uh, something that I believe is more important. So something that I really wish someone told me when I was in high school, something that would have changed the course of my life from that point on had I thought about it earlier. So before I begin, I wanna hear just directly from you guys, what's been on your mind lately? What are you guys going through right now? Anything is okay. You can just share freely. You can even say, I have so much stress from sitting on the computer for so long. I have stress from my parents who also tell me I could only be a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> homework, lots of homework, yes. College apps, yes. Homework, going back to school in person, math. Brian, I feel you. I'm, I was no good at math. <laughs> science, and I, I feel you too. I'm not a math or science person. Physics, oh yeah, physics. Trump and Biden debate, so funny. Who's, who's Nathan? Who said that? Nathan, where are you, Nathan? Well, how come I can't see here. Nathan? Oh, I'm right here. I don't know if you can see my screen. Oh, there's a second page. That's <laughs> Hi, Nathan. Um, History. Okay, so many things that cause you stress physically, emotionally, and mentally. So then next, I want to ask you guys a question. Yeah, I love all your chats right now. Trying to organize yourself before college. Yeah, college is just right around the corner. It's a big deal. So I want to ask you guys this one question and I want to think, I want you to think about it really sincerely, really deeply. If you could put a number on your self-worth, how much would you give yourself? One to 100. If I told you grade your self-worth, what's the number you would give yourself? You can be honest. 20, 23, 23. Michael Jordan, 23. <laughs> How much you are worth to yourself? Yes. How you would grade your own value. One to 100. If you just think about that. 40, okay, 79, 90, 77, 30, 50, 18, 99. Wow. 70, 50, 50. Okay, good. Six, wait, someone said 655? <laughs> Brandon? 655? Oh, 65. 
All right. So you all have a number that you would grade yourself. Now I want to ask you, why? Why did you pick that number? What is your criteria? Can you type in the chat box? Why? Why did you pick that number? Based on what standard? How much organs are worth? Andrew! <laughs> Wait, what did... Andrew, what was your score? How much are your organs worth? <laughs> Human organs are worth a lot. I picked it because it's the middle and I don't think I'm too good or too bad, okay? Nathan, your birthday? Okay. Good vibes from that number, but arbitrary. Due to health. What about others? Why did you pick that number? Whether you picked 15 or 99, how did you pick that number? Any brave souls? Justin says, I picked that number based off of what my family and peers think about me. Okay. Lily, my level of productivity. I feel like the things holding that number down are when I mess up and make mistakes and also feeling like I don't do enough for other standards to be 100. Good. I want Ella, I want a little less than half because of health, stress. How I contribute to the world, my impact on others, and my lack of impact on the world. But I think I'm a good person and important, so in the middle. I'm one of the most important things to me, but I still have room for growth. Great! All right, so everyone has their own standard of why that picked that number. And the reason why I ask you is because this is really something that I wish someone told me when I was in high school. When I was in high school, if you were to ask me this question, what would I put, what would I give myself for my score of self-worth? I would have probably said around 40. And the criteria of why I picked that number is because of how I believed my parents viewed me, how I believed my teachers viewed me, how I believed my friends viewed me, how I believed that society viewed me. So I was a good student. I was in all APs. And you know, the, the typical story, pushed myself so hard to be in all APs. I was in sports. I was on like the robotics team when I didn't even care about robotics. I just wanted to look good for colleges. You know, I did all of these things that a good Asian person would do in my household, but I didn't really love myself at all. And I was just doing these things because this is what I thought society wanted me to do. So my point is that we are taught from a young age to measure ourselves based on the criteria that others have set for us. For example, your parents, their, their criteria might be of what kind of good college you go into. If you go to Harvard, you're an A plus son. Or if you go to Cornell, you're an A plus daughter. But if you go into a state school, oh my God, I'm gonna disown you, like that kind of stuff, right? And then schools, it might be how teachers evaluate your behavior, your academic performance. And then your friends, they might base your, your value on how cool you are based on what they think is cool. But no one, at least when I was in high school, and I think even now still, no one teaches us or tells us to set our own standard. How do you measure up based on what's important to you. So then now I want to ask you, what's important to you? What's important to you? What are your values? Have you thought about it? What's important in your life? Can you type in the chat box? Grades. Yep. Very common. Yeah. In high school, grades seem like the most important thing. Empathy, your sister, your family, helping others. Family grades. Food, Iris said food. <laughs> food is the most important thing to Iris. <laughs> family and friends, relationship with friends, be healthy and alive, family, being able to find solutions, helping those in need, happiness and kindness. Also food, and I was a big foodie too. <laughs> happiness from others and Harry Potter, okay. 
grades, family, friends, family, friends, community. Great. Everyone has their own value. So depending on what's important to you, how do you measure up based on your own standard? Do you even have your own standard? Do you have your own criteria? And those of you who want to succeed, want to go to a good school, why? I know someone said grades. Why do you care so much about grades? What does it mean to you? I'm curious. Why do you have the values that you have? Yeah, validation. To have a comfortable life, yes. Environment, family. Fear of horrible future, yes. So that I can go somewhere and have do something that has a lasting impact, good. Numbers are easy to fixate on. Keep track, meeting expectations. Feel like I'm productive with good grades. The people around us rely on each other. To not feel bad when my friends do well in school and I don't. Yes, better school means better job. That's what we're told, right? If you go to a good school, you're guaranteed a good job and a good future. But that, is that necessarily true? Just because you go to Harvard, you're guaranteed a great future, you're guaranteed a great salary, and you're guaranteed a happy life. Is this true? No, right? So let me give you some examples of successful people who were not good students at all. Did you know that Martin Luther King Jr., would you say Martin Luther King Jr. was a great person? Would you say Martin Luther King Jr. made history, was historically significant? Yes. I don't think there's a single person who would say Martin Luther King didn't make history, was not a good person, like this. He's a very influential figure in American history, right? But did you know that in high school, he was an average student with mostly B's and C's? Mostly B's and C's in high school. Steve Jobs, is Steve Jobs a successful person? According to your standards, is he a successful person? Yes. Yes, right? There's no doubt that he was a successful businessman who also impacted society a lot. I would say most of us, maybe everyone in this room or most of you guys in this room own an iPhone or a Mac. Right? He was very influential, very successful. But did you know that in his own words, he admitted that he was a terrible student and he was actually homeless for a few days and he slept on his friend's floors for about a year. And Al Gore, do you guys know who Al Gore is? Al Gore was the vice president for Bill Clinton. You know who Bill Clinton is, right? The former president. So Al Gore is a former vice president. Vice president, would you say, is a very successful job or not? Being vice president. If you became vice president, would you say that you live successfully? Yeah, vice president, based on society standard, being vice president is a very prestigious job. And I think anyone can say that if you make it to the vice presidency, you have achieved some level of success. But did you know that Al Gore, he graduated college at the bottom of his class with mostly C's and D's. And Steven Spielberg, is he a very famous filmmaker? Would you say he's a successful filmmaker? Yeah, he made very great movies and won a lot of awards and had a lot of recognition in his life. But did you know that he failed out of film school? He got rejected from film school because they said that he sucked. <laughs> did you know all these things? Albert Einstein was a high school dropout and Benjamin Franklin only has a second grade education. So my point in saying all this is what does this mean? How does this compare to what you believe success is? 
when I look at these numbers, when I look at these facts, I make the conclusion that success, fame, and the thing that we work so hard for lies somewhere else. So where could that be? So what these people had that other good students, better students than them, didn't have that determined their success is this. It's the way that they talk to themselves. So let me explain. So each one of these people were told that they'd amount to nothing, that they were failures, weirdos, rejects, losers, and they were all bullied at some point in their lives. So this means that they weren't popular, their teachers didn't particularly care about them, their parents weren't particularly proud of them, and society didn't welcome them with open arms. They did not have status. And yet, despite this, what they did have was an unwavering determination and a voice inside of them that believed in themselves. A voice that believed in what they were doing, a voice that believed in their self-worth of what they could be, of what they contribute to the world. Does that make sense? So they didn't compare themselves to others. They didn't compare themselves to the standard that society placed on them. Instead, they created their own standard and moved from there with a clear knowing of what they want. So I want to ask you, my next question is, what is it that you want in life? What is it that you really, really want? What place do you want to have in society? How do you want the world to remember you? Can you guys share in the chat? What is it that you really want? Think about it. The, maybe your, your automatic response might be, I want money or I want success. But do you want that more than happiness? So, you know, things like this. So really think about what is it that I really want? To live comfortable and happy? Someone said enough sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I want my children to look up to me, yes, to make my parents proud of me, loving family, positive impact, leave a positive impact on the world no matter how successful or poor I am, positive impact on others, positive impact, yes, stability, happy, family, comfortable, achieve my goals, spread kindness and good vibes with a Z <laughs> to everyone. I want to be happy to be remembered as a good person who lived a good life and good people. Remembered as a good person, happy, comfortable. I want to be able to provide everything my family could want. Great. These are all great answers. Most people, I would say, in some way or form, whatever this means to you, I would say most people, when I ask this question, what do you really want? When they look inside, they really want happiness. That happiness has different meanings for everybody, but everyone at the root, they really want happiness. Yes. And is happiness achieved outside or achieved inside? Inside. Good. So I believe that true education, the thing that they really should teach in school and the thing that real leaders such as you guys really have to understand is that true education lies in teaching our youth how to talk to themselves. So how to talk to themselves with kindness, understanding, compassion, encouragement, and confidence. When a leader like you guys knows how to do this, then they know how to talk to everyone with those kinds of energies. When we have more and more people who can communicate from this place of kindness and understanding, don't you think, if you can imagine, don't you think that the world has no other choice but to become a brighter place with a more hopeful future? What do you guys think? Yes. 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 Hey, but guess what? You are the hope. You are the future. You are our leaders. 
So you need to start from here. You need to learn how to talk to yourself with kindness, understanding, compassion, and encouragement. When I look back on my time in high school, and I'm really honest with myself, then I can say that I was not nice to myself in high school. I pushed myself so hard. I wasn't satisfied with anything that I did. I always thought I was lacking. I wasn't good enough. Why? Because there was always someone smarter than me. There was always someone with better grades than me. There was always someone who was prettier than me. There was always someone who was better at sports than me. So when I compare myself to other people, I always felt like I wasn't good enough. So that voice inside my head, everyone has that voice inside of their head that criticizes them all the time. Do you guys have that voice too? The voice that tells you you're not smart enough, the voice that tells you you're not pretty enough or handsome enough or nobody will like you, that voice inside of your head, what does that voice primarily say to you? Is that voice nice to you or is that voice primarily mean to you? Can you type in the chat box? Most of the time, of course there's good days and bad days, but most of the time, is that voice really nice to you or is that voice saying, hey, you suck, you should do better. You need to get good grades. You need to go to a better school. You need to do this, 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 this. Yeah. Everyone said mean. I see doubtful, a mix. Of course, there's good days and bad days. I'm not saying everyone always has mean thoughts to themselves, but for the most part, especially in high school, when you're trying to figure yourself out, when you're trying to find a place in society, when you're trying to live up to so many people's expectations, yourself included, that voice inside of your head is not the nicest person. So what sets good students and gr great people who impact society and influence society, as you guys shared, a lot of you guys want to make an impact on the world. A lot of you in your own way want to achieve your greatest potential on this earth in this lifetime. The difference between just a normal person and a great person is that a great person has a very good relationship with themselves. That no matter if the world tells them they're a failure, they're a reject, they have an unwavering mind of this is what I want and I will not listen to any other standard besides what I create for my own. So in other words, that inner voice inside of you, make that voice your best friend. Does that sound easy or difficult? Hard, difficult. Yeah, it's very hard because that voice is always judging you, always criticizing. But let's think of it from a different perspective. So trying to change my inner voice is very difficult. But let's say that this inner voice popped out of your head and now is a person. So let's say that there's a person that you want to make them your best friend. You think they're so cool and you want to be best friends with this person. But all this person says is, you suck. I hate you. Blah, 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 blah. All these negative things. How would you try to get this person to like you? Any ideas? Give them food. <laughs> Jessica said, give them food. <laughs> okay, yes, give them food. Be nice. Brownies. So what does giving them food, giving them brownies mean? There's something behind that action that touches that person, not the food itself, right? But the intention behind giving them the food. So what is that intention? Be nice to them. <laughs> Become a source of happiness, being kind. Yes, if someone only sees the bad things in you, the way to change their mind is you have to show them your good side. Does that make sense? If someone thinks you're a very mean person and you want to change their mind, you have to show them you're a nice person. That's why you give them pizookis, you give them brownies, you give them food because you want to say, hey, you know what? I'm not as awful as you think. 
I'm actually a pretty good person. If you get to know me, I'm actually a pretty good person. Does that make sense to you? So you have to show them a different side of you than what they believe. So just like this, you have to show a different side of yourself than what you believe. If you believe that you have all these negative things about you, you have to show yourself all the positive things about you that quiet that negative voice. So now if you guys have a piece of paper, can you guys all take out a piece of paper and a pen? Yeah, so I'm going to just read some more of your, your chat comments. So helping them, putting yourself out there first, yes. Imagine that the way you talk to yourself is the way someone else is talking to you. Talking to your friend and get mad. <laughs> okay, so take out this piece of paper and what you're going to do now is do you have a desire to change the voice inside of your head that's mean to you? Or do you want to stay saying mean things to yourself? If you guys want to change that mean voice into a kind, compassionate, loving voice, would you type yes in the chat room? Yes. Yeah, everyone wants to feel good, feel happy and be nice to themselves, right? So let's practice that. On this piece of paper, I want you to write 10 genuine compliments that you have for yourself when you see yourself objectively. So for example, please say it like this. I am blank. So when you see yourself objectively, your behaviors, your thoughts, your talents, come up with 10 genuine compliments that you would say about yourself. So for example, I am compassionate. I am empathetic. It could be anything that applies to you, but coming from a genuine place, a sincere compliment, not something sarcastic like I am nice, I guess, sometimes. Not like this. Something very genuine that you can say to yourself from your heart. So 10 things. And please write it. I am blank. I am blank. I am blank. For some people, this will be very easy. For some people, this can be the hardest thing you've ever done. Whether this is easy or hard, that also gives you some insight and clue as to how well you can compliment yourself and how not well you compliment yourself. Me in high school, I could not compliment myself at all because all I heard from my parents was, not good enough, A minus, why didn't you get an A plus? Minus one, why didn't you get minus zero? These kinds of voices became my own voices. So this compliment exercise was very difficult for me. So please watch that in yourself too. Is it easy for me to write 10 good things about myself or is it difficult for me to find 10 good things about myself? Do you guys need more time? More time, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And while we wait, if you, for those of you who are done, just read over, just look over what you wrote. And if you can think of more, please write more. By no means, you don't have to limit yourself to just 10. If the compliments just pour out, then please write as much as you can, but at least 10. And it doesn't have to be all school related either. 
it doesn't have to be like I am good at math. You know, not not like this. Like as a human being, I am blank. Can I see a raise of hands of who's done? So about, I think half. Okay, so we'll just give you one more minute. Do your best for one more minute and write as many as you can. If you can't get 10, that's okay. Just write as many as you can in this last one minute. All right. Okay, now hold up this piece of paper and I want you to read each one out loud to yourself. Your mics are all muted, so you can scream it at the top of your lungs if you want to, but say it out loud to yourself with confidence from your heart's voice. So what I mean by that is, is don't be like, I am nice. I am a good listener. So not like this. That's not, that's not how you compliment somebody. If someone said, hey, Jessica, you're a nice person. Would you feel that compliment? Or, hey, Brian, I think you're cool. Does that seem genuine to you? Not really, right? So when you compliment yourself, <laughs> when you compliment yourself, have confidence and speak from your voice. So you would say, I am a great listener. I am nice. I am funny. Like this, loudly to yourself. You're all muted, so you are in a safe place. Please go down your list and read each one confidently out loud to yourself and feel it in your heart. Okay, start. Iris, are you reading? Lydia, Misha. It's interesting to see too. If I have a hard time reading this out loud, then that's another interesting thing to watch. Oh, I guess I don't really know how to compliment myself. Okay, sorry, Misha. Sorry, Lydia. I didn't realize you finished. <laughs> okay, great. So can you share in the chat box, how did it feel to say these compliments about yourself out loud? Please be honest. Can you type how it felt? Scary, yes, weird, uh-huh, optimistic, pretty awkward and forced. I totally understand. Felt like I was hyping myself up, kind of cool. <laughs> awkward and different. It was very hard to do, but very scary. Weird, okay, felt nice, awkward. A little weird because I'm used to thinking only about the negative things. I totally understand. Awkward, odd, weird. My entire being felt relieved and kind of scared at the same time. Yeah. Felt very nice to say because the compliments flowed into each other as short phrases. 
Yeah, so this is where we are. This is where society has put us. Nobody tells you how to compliment yourself. Nobody tells you or gives you the space to think about the positive things about you, especially in school. It's an environment of competition. You have to survive. The only way to make it is to trample over other people. And I have to be number one because there's only one number one and I don't want to be number two. That kind of environment doesn't foster a great leader. So great leaders like you have to know a different way to evaluate and value yourself. So now I want to ask you guys, do you guys want to help each other have a more positive inner voice? Can you say yes or no? If you, if you want to help each other, say yes. Right now. Do you want to help each other right now establish and develop a stronger positive voice? Yes. Good. Then do you guys want to create a space right now where we can share and grow that positive voice without judging each other? With no judgment, nothing. Do you want to purely from a sincere place help each other right now grow that positive voice? If you do, could you say yes? Nathan, si. <laughs> yes. Yes in Espanol. <laughs> okay, yes. Okay, so you guys promise that we're going to create a judgment-free, safe environment for us to practice this? All right. Everyone hold their pinky up. We're gonna promise, okay? Promise, judgment-free zone. We're gonna help each other, all right? Great, so now that we all promised each other, can I have a few volunteers to read their list? We all promise we won't judge each other. You're in a safe place. People who volunteer, you will really really break out of your box and really break that negative voice you have inside this is a safe place a great opportunity if you want to break out and you're really determined to become more positive and more healthy this is your chance volunteers brandon you okay so there's there's a way we're gonna do this Okay, so Brandon is going to read each one of his compliments. And after each one, we are all going to, I, I, if you can all unmute yourselves, we're going to all unmute, thumbs up and say, yes, you are. So for example, if, Brand, if Brandon says, I am smart, then we're all going to say, support him and say, yes, you are. Does that make sense? Yeah? So please say it in a very encouraging voice. If you say, yes, you are. Is Brandon gonna really feel it? Is that gonna help him? No, right? So we all promise to help and support each other. So please say, yes, you are, after every sentence he says. Okay? All right. Brandon, you're a brave soul. I commend you for being the first one to volunteer. So please unmute your mic and say one at a time what you wrote. All right. <clears throat> um, I'm willing to put myself out there and be outgoing. Yes, you yes, are! You are. <laughs> um, I am low-key a beast at soccer. Yes, yes you are! are. <laughs> Okay, so Brandon, say it with more confidence. You're still saying, right. oh, I'm kind of low key good at soccer. Okay, I am a hard worker. Yes, you <laughs> are! I am appreciative of the world that I live in. Yes, you <laughs> are! Um, I am willing to make mistakes and learn from them to be better in the future. Yes! You are! Um, I am outspoken about my opinions. Yes, you are! Um, I am an adventurous person. Yes, you, yes, you are. are! I am a leader on my campus and in my community. Yes, you, you are! are. Uh, 
And then I am a down to earth kind of guy. Yes, you are! All right, Great job! Going. Let's give my hands! How was that, Brandon? Can you share? Can you turn on your mic and share how that felt? It's pretty good being able to just like yell it out loud. And then you're really encouraging when you say <laughs> yes, you are. Doesn't it create yeah. a smile on your face? Of course. And it boosts yeah. your self confidence, right? For sure. Makes yeah. you feel good about yourself. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you heard it from Brandon himself. Next volunteer. Anyone? If no one volunteers, I'm going to randomly call somebody. That's even more scary, huh? <laughs> <laughs> brave soul who wants to break out of their box and grow this positive voice no judgment jessica said in the chat that she's that oh oh i see sorry i was too focused on the screen watching everyone avoid my eye contact <laughs> all right okay jessica turn on your mic and everybody please Unmute yourselves after she speaks and says, yes, you are. Can you hear me? Yes, Jessica, with confidence. Okay. I'm hardworking. Yes, yes, you, yes are. you are. I'm compassionate. Yes, yes, yes you, you are. I'm pretty good at self-control. Yes, yes, you, you are. are. Uh, I have pretty long lashes. Yes, you yes, do. Yes. Uh, I am smart. Yes, you yes, are. are. I am accountable. Yes, yes you, are. you are. I am creative. Yes, you I are. are. I am detailed. Yes, you are. You are. I have a very adaptable palette. Yes, yes you do! <laughs> and I am responsible. Yes, you are! Woo! Great job, Jessica! Give her a hand, please! <laughs> Jessica, can you share how that felt? My face. What'd you say? Sorry, you broke up a little bit. I have a big smile on my face now. Yeah. Yeah, see? It really changes you when you learn how to compliment yourself and find the good qualities and then declare it out to the world. No matter what anybody says, what you believe about yourself is the most important. Even if society says, you're so smart, you're a good student. If I feel like a bad student, if I don't feel good enough, then am I going to really believe what other people tell me? It's all what you believe about yourself. So Jessica, did that feel good or no? Oh, that, that felt great. Yeah. And you have a big smile on your face now. Great. One more hand for Jessica. All right. One more volunteer. One more volunteer. If you need encouragement, yes, you can do this. Brandon and Jessica now have a big smile. Who wants to have a big smile on their face? Hmm, no volunteers. What if I make Jessica pick somebody? <laughs> Anyone? Anyone? Hmm, okay then. Jessica, do you wanna pick somebody or do you want me to pick somebody? Name in mind. What? I have a name in my mind. Oh, Jessica's gonna pick somebody. She's gonna pick somebody. Okay, who is it, Jessica? Uh, Claire Chen. Claire! Woo! Hi, right, Claire. I'm very upset. <laughs> you know the drill. One sentence and we're gonna all say, yes, you are. Really loudly to support Claire. Okay. All right, Claire, take it away. Okay, I am a kind person. Yes, yes you, you are. are. 
Okay, I am self-improving and I don't let failure hold me back for too long. <laughs> yes, yes, you do! No. Oh, sorry. I am a good writer. Yes, you yes, are! No. I am smart and I learn fast. <laughs> yes, you are and do! I'm good at cooking and baking. Yes, yes you, are. you are! I am well-rounded. <laughs> Yes, you are! I am generous and I always try to help people. Yes, yes you are you and do! I am self-aware and I try not to be a mean person. Yes, you are! I, uh, I am committed and I find passion in everything that I do. Yes, yes you are and do! Yeah, I think that was it. <laughs> Great job, Claire! Claire, can you share how that felt? Yeah, it does feel good. <laughs> I was a little nervous, but I think it was worth it. Yeah, it feels great. And you're smiling. Smiling is the best stress medicine. I can sit here and teach you all these techniques and how the brain works and all that. But at the end of the day, if you don't smile, it's going to give you stress. What do you think, Brandon, Jessica, and Claire? Did just smiling blow away all the stress from the day? Yeah, it really changed your energy, right? Yes. So I wanna say this. Did you know that the sun that gives life to everything on earth and in our solar system, even the sun has black spots? Did you know this? Even the sun that gives life to everything on our earth has black spots. What does that mean? Even something that does such good work, like the sun giving life to everything, has dark areas. That means just like the sun, we all have good points and bad points. But it's my choice. Do I choose to focus more on the good side of me or do I choose to focus more on the bad side of me? And that choice determines what my inner voice says to me. And what that inner voice says to you will determine the quality of your life and will determine the happiness that you all said that you wanted or the sadness and stress that maybe some of you guys are feeling now. So one last thing I want to leave you guys with is you can only do your best at any given moment. So always do your best. But your best and someone else's best are not the same. A tiger doing its best is different from a bird doing its best. So if I were to ask you, what's a better animal, tiger or bird? What would you say? They're both equally important. Yes, who said that? <laughs> bird, someone says bird. Who said they're both equally important? Wait, you turned on your mic, but now you turned it off. Where'd you disappear? <laughs> okay, so- Sorry, I didn't mean to ask you. Oh, that's I didn't know. I was supposed to type in chat, sorry. Oh, I see. No, it's okay. So some might say bird, some might say tiger, but can you really say a bird is less, any less than a tiger? A bird has its own ability and a tiger has its own ability too. A tiger can, is very strong and uh, majestic on the earth, but a bird can fly. A tiger can't fly, but a bird can fly. So like this, different animals have different purpose. So like that, every single person, they're all equally valuable. Someone, some people are tigers, some people are birds, some people are monkeys, some people are rhinos, some people are kangaroos, some people are giraffes. There's many, many different types of animals, many, many different types of people, but there is absolutely nothing that says a tiger is any better than a bird. So in this way, everybody is valuable in their own way. So always do your best based on your own standard.
your own value. You are perfect and valuable just the way you are. And you guys already know this in your head, but I hope that you can all find it in your heart too. Yes, you all know this in your head, but I hope you can find it in your heart too. And it starts with learning how to see the positive good sides of myself and changing your inner dialogue from negative to complimenting yourself every single day. Find five things to compliment yourself every single day. And in front of your mirror, hold up your paper and declare out loud to yourself, I am blah, I am blah. Yes. That is all I have for you today. And this is what I, when I look back now in high school, this was what I wish someone told me. And maybe if I had heard about this concept earlier of finding my own standard and changing my inner dialogue, I think my high school years could have been much smoother, much gentler, and even my college years too, much smoother, much more happy, much more kind to myself. Yes, that is all. Yay, thank you all so much. 